Kitco News special coverage of the Future Blockchain Summit is brought to you by Cook Finance, a revolution in DeFi asset management. I'm here with Amrita Sethi. She is an ex-banker turned artist and entrepreneur, creator of voiceover art and digital NFT art. That is so cool. You're not going skiing anytime soon, right? That, what no, is no, that? This is, uh, this is what the future looks like. Yeah. Um, so that, it serves awesome. as like glasses, a bit of mask action for against COVID. Right. Um, but it's also a, like a new future aesthetic, which oh, is okay. where I believe we're going. Okay, but just to be clear, those, those aren't glasses for augmented reality, right? No, they're not. Okay, let's yeah. talk about augmented reality. Let's talk about the art and let, like, your, your, the what you're wearing right now. So what I can do is I can actually scan this. Yeah. And then if you don't mind turning around for the camera here, so just the other side, I can scan this It'll take me to Instagram. I'll take my phone camera. I'll scan this picture, and we'll show a, a clip of that on, uh, on on in the footage. That becomes augmented reality. It's an animation, and yeah. uh, and then what do you do with that? So effectively, for me, what I wanted to show is that this is really the future of fashion, right? So augmented reality, the way we um, uh, the way we interact with our clothes, and the way we start to see each other we're going to start to live in a hybrid reality, wow. right? So like where, where we are in the physical world is, it's what you see is where we are right now. It's like what you're wearing, yeah. but actually by just like a flick of a phone or even the future, just to look through a, a specific goggle, yeah. all of a sudden we start to see new dimensions. And I think this is what like the concept of digital art and NFTs are now doing for the creative economy. We're able to take away from, I would say, 2D and the, the, our 3D reality and be able to access new dimensions that to our brain are, is exactly real, even though it's digitally there and you can switch it off. But in our brains, it's just like as real as it gets. Do you think NFTs will be the new way that all art is sold? I mean, when you think about art, traditional art, it's physical. You touch a painting, you can see a painting but this digital world has just emerged. How is this gonna impact the way artists interact with their users? So I think it completely is gonna revolutionize it. So recently, in fact, last week, I've just painted uh, one of the first augmented reality mural yeah. NFTs right. in Dubai, maybe even in the world. And what that is, is like, I've taken, I painted a mural, it was like 20 meters long by 15 meters high. And in itself, it's a beautiful piece of art. Like it's painted, hand painted, and it's there, but that's, that's all it is. It's like a flat image. The image is a 2D image on a wall. Okay, the wall is 3D. But even then, that 3D or 2D starts to feel lack of dimension. The minute you scan the QR code and you play back the augmented reality, all of a sudden, that starts to add layers. It starts to animate, it starts to bring it to life. So you're jumping up, like away from a 2D visual kind of experience to a fully immersive experience. Right. And I think that it may, it's not something that all artists will use, but I definitely do think that this is a revolution in how we see art. I think in the future, children and our children's children will be like, oh, sorry, look, mommy, that, t that art is just only doing that. It's just a flat image. There's right. nothing more to it. So I do think it's going to be a massive um, change. And I think that people are so focused on, on the word NFT yeah. and they're forgetting about the creativity that NFT is unlocking. People new to the space may not understand NFT, especially NFT arts, especially valuations. You're an ex-banker, you understand valuations. Somebody paid $1.3 million in August for a JPEG of a rock. How does that make sense to you? Well, I mean, it does because, I mean, if you think about it, if we go back in the times when, say, Picasso came out or Dali or these artists that are really revolutionary that have then changed the way people see art, a lot of the time that's priced in, right? So it's because it's the first of its time. So you are paying a lot for that first, that fine kind of fine of first mover. And the fact that it is a rock, Exactly, the fact that you think, oh, what the hell, it's just a rock, it's, why would I pay that much money? It's a bit when Rothko painted just a, like a red square or something, people would be like, why would I pay so much for that? But it's that mindset of how you can change 
people's view of what art is, is what then becomes important, which is number one. But then number two, it becomes a point of, of rarity and scarcity, yeah. right? So it's a, this where world of where we're also intersecting between art, collectibles, and the blockchain. And all of a sudden, like with that rock, there's only 100 rocks that have been created. So if you think about 100 rocks versus 9 billion people on the planet, yeah. and those are the only ones who have the rarity, of course, you're, that's going to be priced at a certain place as well. So I think people, people are focusing too much on the actual image of whether it's a rock or a potato or a crypto punk. And then look, I think you need to look beyond that and look at the, the cultural and artistic revolution that's happening as a result of it. Right. Well, the other issue with NFTs, digital, digital art, for example, is that it could be could it not be easily replicated and distributed as a, as a replica? How would you be able to tell the original from, let's say, a fake? So what I would say on that is that people need to apply the same kind of logic and reasoning they do with physical art yes. than they do to do digital art. Yes. So, for example, I'm sure you have a painting in your house um, that you've spent quite a nice amount of money on or whatever the case is, and it's in your house. Now, I could come to your house, take a picture of it, and go and sell that, couldn't I? I could take, get my best SLR camera out, come and take a photo, and without you knowing, go and create images and distribute it. But I don't, right? Because people also understand that, why would I want to do that? Because this is, it kind of has less meaning or less uh, you know, concept behind it, right? Yeah. And so I think that, that the same way you ha apply the, in the physical world, that kind of logic. I think the community will do its own kind of self-regulating, but obviously over time, yeah. that especially with the blockchain, it's easier to identify. But I do think there's still a work, more work to be done around a, a proof checking and fact checking where, you know, which artist has put it up because, you know, artist work is being still being stolen by scammers and stuff like that. So. With any new industry, you're always going to get the chances out there, but it'll normalize in the end. Can you maybe talk to us about uh, the other applications of NFTs outside of the artistic world? Oh, yeah. So NFT, I think the reason also why NFTs are so significant is, yes, they've started with art because it's something, a visual thing. It's yeah. easy to capture the hearts and minds of people. But actually, then after that, then you can lead to, I would say, you know, more like not boring stuff, but more and very important and necessary stuff. So for example, let's talk about birth certificates. The minute, you know, I come from, you know, lots of different countries. I've lived in lots of different worlds. Um, you know, I was born and brought up in Kenya, lived in the UK, lived all over. And to have that, imagine you've just gone in, you've got boy, you've got your birth certificate, it's locked in, you don't need to, you know, you don't need to go re reapply for it or even passports. All of that gets really easily blocked into the blockchain. So when it comes to renewals of important documents, birth certificates, death certificates, everything is nicely logged into the system, which then becomes decentralized for everybody to access. Well, let's talk about the technological advances in art itself. What is voice over art? Well, technically, I like, the, I like how you're saying voice over, but it's actually voice note. Voice note voice art. art. I'm yeah. sorry. Well, but it's that's, okay. Uh, but yeah. it's uh, that's okay because it's kind of the same thing in a way. So what I kind of what I what I did is I created this concept um, of voice note art. So what I wanted to do is I use I wanted to use technology yeah. to tell a story. So I'm sure you've heard of the phrase a picture's worth a thousand words, okay. right? So let's flip it on its head and say a word is worth a thousand pictures. So for example, like. You know, even say Kitco or David, your name or the set, the word. There's so many images that would come up to, for, in your mind, right? So like, or even if I ask your friends about you. So it's about like it's like telling a story. It's like painting a modern day I, I, portrait. I wonder what an NFT of David would look like. I would be so, curious. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so basically, what I do is you say your name, David. Yeah. I capture the shape and structure of the word of right. what you've just said. Yeah. And then each of the lines of the sound wave, I draw to match the meaning of the word. So for example, I've done one for Dubai. And in that, I've put in different buildings of Dubai and sure. captures the essence. But if we take it to somebody like you, I could be, you, I could be interviewing you right. and I could be asking you, 
you know, tell me about, about yourself. You were yeah. saying you were born in here, you lived in the exactly. Canada, yeah. you were from Taiwan, yeah. um, you know, you went to McGill. And all of those images and that story is then told in a dynamic way. Sure. Then you use animation to bring that to life, augmented reality, and that's captured into an NFT. Now, isn't that so much more, um, you know, dynamic? Isn't that so much more creative than just a photo of you? Or an artist coming and just painting a picture that's of you? Cool concept, and that's exactly what you've done with the image in your back. Yes. Yeah, you, 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 it's an NFT of Dubai. It's a voice note. It's me saying Dubai, yeah. it's me saying the word future NFT Dubai. Yes. Okay. So um, and that is being painted on a massive wall right. at the DIFC in Dubai. Right. Well, you came from a traditional finance background. You, you worked in banking and wealth management. Why are you? How did you trans transform yourself into an artist uh, turned uh, uh, entrepreneur? You know, this is uh, this is new. This is uh, exciting. This is, yeah. This is. If somebody had said to me like three years ago or four years ago that I would be sitting here with a futuristic visor, with a virtual reality, augmented reality, a buyer, I would just never believe them. So, I mean, I've spent my whole time working for some of the world's biggest financial organizations um, and insurance companies. And then about like, I would say about three years ago, I wanted to leave the banking, the corporate world for a more entrepreneurial calling first, right? So I actually left to go start my own kind of finance asset management company. But in that time, when I did, I kind of went back to my artistic self when I was a child. So I don't know if you had any hobbies when you were younger. I, I love music. I play violin, piano. I still do, actually. But exactly. And did you ever have dreams that you would become a famous musician or that you would be able to take your I music? Did. Yeah, I did. Those dreams died. But you see, <laughs> that's what I thought, right? I thought my dreams had died as well. And in that time that I went from the corporate world to the entrepreneurial, I had that time to think because, you know, we're all constantly in a rat race, yeah. right? We're running. We don't know whatever. And then I just had that moment. I just said, I've got some time. I went to Central St. Martins in London yeah. and then as for to do an art course. And then that was it. And, and I created this concept. And you drew the mural yourself, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow, absolutely. That's very talented. Yeah, my mother's an artist, actually. So I, I grew up around physical art. I'll, I'll ask her about uh, digitizing some of her paintings. That could look really cool. She did a few paintings of me, actually. But, oh, yeah, exactly. We can and we can see how we can make that a bit dynamic. But you see, what's interesting about that is that I, when I became a traditional, when I became an artist, I used technology because I used sound and all of this. But at the time, I didn't know about NFTs. Yeah. And then I, in, it was only because of COVID yeah. that I found out about NFTs. Yeah, and you could do this for voice, voice note art. You could do this for music too. You could take the sound waves and create some sort of pattern. Absolutely. Yeah. You can take the sound, voice of the music and the images could match what the song is singing about, yeah. right? So it could be a language of its own, a font of its own almost. So yeah. what's next for you, Amrita? What's your next project? Oh, I've got some um, some big things planned. Um, exciting collaborations coming up with some really big, um, you know, some some important um, uh, big companies, both within the crypto space and in the the I would say the physical world space. Because I think what I want to do um, by doing things like the mural, like doing things like augmented reality, is I want to bring the mainstream out of the gallery into the arena. Yeah. So I like to work with brands like, for example, DIFC in Dubai, right. uh, which is with their innovation hub. Um, and that starts to talk to a lot of, I would say, the mainstream. But also, I, you know, also working with some of the top crypto um, companies and exchanges to also then uh, build the ecosystem. Yeah. So the projects that I like to go big, I like to go large, and I like to people to be like, what's Amrita coming next? And I can guarantee you it'll be something uh, hopefully newsworthy well, as well. Let's follow up on that. I imagine there's uh, this could dramatically change how art is viewed and consumed. You could have virtual, well, virtual reality art galleries where you don't even have to leave your home, or you could go to a physical gallery and just scan your phone and everything will be augmented. That could be cool. Does that exist already? Yeah, I mean, it, you have a whole hybrid of things coming yeah. up. And yeah. so like even now, for example, like with my art, you, you, you can buy a physical art and it has the NFT with it so that when you scan the augmented reality, it's there. So you don't even in the future, you won't even have to go anywhere. Yeah. 
it's just hanging in your house, right. your friends come over and you're like, oh, check out this art here, this work. So all of a sudden, you know, it's this kind of mixture of we're living in literally a hybrid reality. Like even now, we're living in this dimension. In the future, when, when it becomes quite mainstream, it will literally just be a click of the phone or a view in a goggle glass to start to like this image, exactly. this, this banner will come alive. That banner will come alive. Maybe your suit. You don't know what's beyond somebody until you put a filter on them. Yeah. You know, like, okay, fine. Like with mine, did you anticipate that that's going to pop out of my back? It's actually happening now, actually, uh, in some forms. I mean, Snapchat has filters, Instagram has filters. We used an Instagram uh, filter actually to kind of yeah, scan so, your thing. Exactly. Out. How many, how long before we get it in goggles, do you think? I think probably not long at all. I think I think it's the question of, I think they probably they do exist. I would say, yeah. whether or not how long that comes into the mainstream, that becomes a different thing, right. um, because it does. You know, I think, I think people have to just get used to the concept of what digital art can do, um, and then I think once that comes to normalize, then you can start to in introduce new technologies. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Amrita, fantastic talking oh, to you. I learned you a lot. So thank much. you. <laughs> you thank take you. care. And thank you for watching Kitco News. I'm David Lin. Kitco News special coverage of the Future Blockchain Summit is brought to you by Cook Finance, a revolution in DeFi asset management.